Apollo 10. Man's second journey to orbit the moon was a full-scale rehearsal of all of the activities required to land men on the lunar surface except for the actual landing, which is scheduled for the next Apollo mission. Specifically, the eight-day, three-minute mission was a final test of the descent and ascent stages of the lunar module in lunar orbit, the environment for which it was designed. The mission provided the maximum operational experience with the lunar module before committing to a lunar landing. To carry out the detailed objectives of this mission, the National Aeronautics and Space Administration selected three veteran astronauts as the crew of Apollo 10. The command pilot, Thomas P. Stafford, had flown on two Gemini missions, as had the command module pilot, John W. Young. Eugene A. Cernan, the lunar pilot, had flown with Stafford on the Gemini 9 mission. Charlie Brown was selected by the astronauts as the code name for the Apollo 10 command module. And his friend Snoopy was the call sign for the lunar module. Of significant importance at Launch Complex 39 of the Kennedy Space Center was that Apollo 10 was the first space vehicle launched from Pad B. The four previous Apollo Saturn V space vehicles had been launched from Pad A. Also, in the Launch Control Center at Complex 39, a third firing room was used for the first time. The utilization of these facilities brought Complex 39 to a full operational level with a dual launch pad capability. The final countdown for Apollo 10 was begun on May 17th and proceeded without any major hold. Dr. Kurt Debus and Rocco Patron headed the launch team. Following fueling of the mighty Saturn launch vehicle and the Apollo spacecraft, the three astronauts arrived at the launch pad. At T minus two hours and 40 minutes, the crew entered the white room atop the launch tower and prepared to board the spacecraft. The final countdown events were monitored by some 550 government and industry personnel in the launch control center. These included Dr. George E. Miller, head of the manned spaceflight program, Lieutenant General Sam Phillips, director of the Apollo program, and Dr. Werner von Braun, director of the Marshall Space Flight Center, which developed the Saturn V launch vehicle. The vice president of the United States, Spiral Agnew, and a number of national and international dignitaries were also present at the Space Center to witness the launch of the Apollo moon rocket. These included the King and Queen of Belgium and many United States senators and congressmen. The launch date and liftoff time for Apollo 10, established four months before launch, were selected to obtain the same lighting conditions on the moon that will be required for the actual first lunar landing mission. As the clock approached 12.49 p.m. on Sunday afternoon, May 18, 1969, the countdown for the moon-bound Apollo 10 space vehicle reached ignition precisely on schedule. From counting guidance internal, 15, 14, 13, 12, 11, 10, 9, we have ignition sequence start. Engines on, five, four, three, two, all engines running. Three-stage Saturn V launch vehicle performed perfectly. 
to place Apollo 10 into an Earth parking orbit of 117 by 114 miles after 12 minutes of flight. Mission Control in Houston, Texas, confirmed that all space vehicle systems were functioning as planned. The Mission Control team was headed by Dr. Robert Gilruth and Chris Kraft. Midway through the second revolution of the Earth, as Apollo 10 passed over Australia, the third stage was reignited to place Apollo 10 into a free return lunar trajectory. For the second time in history, three men had left their home planet on a journey to the moon. After leaving Earth orbit, the astronauts began preparation for command service module separation, transposition, and docking with the lunar module to remove it from the third stage. These maneuvers were accomplished as planned and were broadcast to the world via a color TV camera aboard the command module. This was the first live color TV transmission from a manned spacecraft. Be docked in a second, Al. Roger. I stand, uh, Houston. Uh, you're looking good. We can see the uh, markings in the rendezvous with it. It looks like you just docked. Roger, Howard. we got a capture. You have a fire jet. Roger. Gene, we can re read the uh, numbers on the lamb right, uh, docking window. Snap, snap, and we're there. Got two grays. Roger. You're still on the docket, Charlie. We didn't get any master alarm. Everything looks stuck. Roger. Didn't look like there was any, uh, hardly any, uh, uh, after dock, post docking of oscillation. Yep. The docking was completed at three hours and ten minutes into the mission. The lunar module was then separated from the third stage of the launch vehicle. After a planned evasive maneuver, the fuel remaining in the third stage was released, propelling the spent stage into a new trajectory which carried it away from the path of the spacecraft and into an orbit around the sun. Zoom was a real good. Uh, we have the S-4B. The sun's real bright on it. How's the focus? Hey, it looks real good. Hello, Houston Apollo 10. Go ahead, 10. Uh, Roger, I wish you'd tell uh, Dr. Von Braun, Lee James, Kurt Davis, and Rocco Patron. Thanks a lot to all the people who worked on it for the great night. Roger, uh, we're going out to the networks now. I think uh, it's probably, probably heard it. Uh, we'll pass it on, though. You know, the future, the few thousand people worked on that machine, I'm sure appreciate it. Roger, look beautiful from here. The accuracy of the translunar insertion maneuver was such that only one mid-course correction of a possible four was necessary on the quarter of a million mile flight to the moon. Hey, boy, that is really fantastic. We can pick out Baja and the smog over LA, and uh, we see Mexico, and we go off to the, to the east in our picture and uh, come into the Rockies area. The Baja, California, and the Gulf area really stand out beautiful. We can see uh, Mexico, and... Uh, the clouds up over the Rockies. It's really a fantastic sight. Okay, this has got to be the greatest sight ever. You ought to see it up here. During the flight, the spacecraft was placed into a slow roll, known as passive thermal control. The maneuver ensured that the intense heat of the sun would not build up on one side of the spacecraft during the flight to and from the moon. On the third day of the mission, as Apollo 10 approached the moon, the main engine was again ignited to slow the spacecraft, allowing it to be pulled into orbit of the moon by lunar gravity. The initial elliptical lunar orbit was 195 by 68 miles. After two revolutions, this was changed to a near circular orbit 69 miles above the moon. In the landing site, uh, Apollo 11 will land and I'll go back and zoom in on that again. Roger. Okay, there's Sensorinus. Over here is the crater Bulky. Uh, pardon me, Masculine, Masculine Bay. We come down here to a little bright crater there. It's right near the tip of the Oklahoma foothills there. It's called Bulky. And to the left, right in this area, is the landing site where Apollo 11 should land. Over. Okay, we got them all, Tom. They're coming through real good. Later on the same day, 
astronaut Cernan transferred to the lunar module for the first time to check out and prepare it for subsequent operations. At the completion of this activity, he returned to the command module. As the Apollo 10 crew rested in lunar orbit, activity on Earth at America's spaceport continued at a high level. On the day before Apollo 10 reached the moon, the Apollo 11 space vehicle had been moved from the assembly building to launch pad A at Complex 39. At the same time, key officials of NASA's Apollo program met at the Space Center. Lieutenant General Sam Phillips met with program managers from the field centers to review preparations for the Apollo 11 mission. Dr. George Miller met with members of the President's Scientific Advisory Committee and members of the Science and Technology Advisory Committee to discuss Apollo 11 and the future manned spaceflight program. Launch pad checkout of the space vehicle, destined to land two American astronauts on the moon, was well underway on the day of the final test of Apollo's lunar module in orbit above the moon. The critical Apollo 10 maneuvers began on the fourth day of the mission, when astronauts Stafford and Cernan entered the lunar module. They activated its systems, deployed the landing gear, and prepared to undock from the command module. On direction from mission control, a short burn of the service module's small engines was initiated to separate the lunar module from its mothership. The two spacecraft moved 30 feet apart and maintained station keeping for one half hour, while the command module pilot maneuvered his spacecraft around the lunar module to visually inspect its exterior. Then, with all systems in order and functioning as planned, the lunar module's descent engine was fired to place it into a descent trajectory. This brought the lunar module down to an altitude of 47,000 feet, or about nine miles above the Sea of Tranquility, the closest man has ever been to the lunar surface. During the descent, the lunar landing radar system aboard the LEM performed as anticipated. Communication from the low point of the lunar module orbit, however, was relatively poor. This problem is being studied and will be corrected prior to the landing mission. Man, I'll tell you, uh, we are low. We are close, Dave. This is like it. Uh, and it really looks pretty smooth down there, surprisingly enough. And this lead is laying a huge boulder all around the rim of it, falling on the inside and outside. Until this time, Apollo 10 had duplicated each step of an actual lunar landing mission. Shortly after passing the site selected for the first manned lunar landing, the descent engine was fired to thrust the module away from the moon's surface. This was a maneuver to establish a lead angle or distance between the two spacecraft equivalent to the rendezvous distance of an actual landing mission. The maneuver placed the lunar module into an elliptical orbit of 218 by 9 miles, while the command service module remained in a circular orbit. During the elliptical orbit, the two Apollo 10 spacecraft were as far as 414 miles apart. This provided an in-flight test of the Apollo rendezvous radar at maximum range. As the lunar module again approached the low point in its orbit, staging was initiated. The descent stage, which will be used on a landing mission for the actual touchdown and provide a launch platform for liftoff, was separated from the ascent stage. Immediately after staging, an unexpected maneuver occurred due to a procedural problem. Commander Stafford immediately took over manual control of the lunar module ascent stage and corrected the situation. The ascent propulsion system was then fired as planned to place the ascent stage into a 52 by 13 mile orbit. The staging and ascent maneuver simulated liftoff from the lunar surface after a landing mission. At the high point in this orbit, the small maneuvering engines were fired to place the lunar module into a 52-mile high circular orbit. The lunar module was now 17 miles below and 169 miles behind the command module. After coasting for 38 minutes, the small engines were fired again to complete rendezvous with the command module. 
the highly successful docking of the ascent stage with the command module was accomplished smoothly, expeditiously, and on schedule at 106 hours and 33 minutes into the mission. Stafford and Cernan then returned through the connecting tunnel to the command module. They had spent more than eight hours flying the lunar module around the moon. The ascent stage was then jettisoned by the crew. At a signal from ground command, its engine was burned to propellant depletion, thrusting the ascent stage away from the command module into solar orbit. Ground contact was maintained with the ascent stage until its batteries were depleted some 12 hours later. During this period, numerous tests of ascent stage systems were conducted from mission control. The Apollo 10 flight plan again differed from that plan for the landing mission in that Apollo 10 spent an extra day in lunar orbit conducting lunar landmark tracking and extensive scientific photography. This included detailed stereo and a blank photos of potential landing sites on the lunar surface. Deep canyons or rills, massive craters, and majestic mountain ranges were photographed. This photo of the Sea of Tranquility shows the smooth area where two Apollo 11 astronauts will soon land and set foot upon the moon. After orbiting the moon 31 times, the Apollo 10 crew prepared to fire the spacecraft's main engine to escape lunar gravity. The burn was initiated on the fifth day of the mission on the backside of the moon. The burn was so accurately targeted and executed that only one minor course correction was required during the 240,000 mile return trip to ensure entry into the Earth's atmosphere at the proper angle. Another space first was accomplished on the mission when all three crewmen enjoyed their first shave in space using the old reliable safety razor and brushless shaving cream. A final TV transmission from Apollo 10 included scenes of their approach to the good Earth. In the pre-dawn hours of May 26, Apollo 10 entered the Earth's atmosphere as planned over the Pacific Ocean. Entry speed was calculated by computers to be 24,760 miles per hour, the fastest any human beings have ever flown. The path of the spacecraft was so accurate that entry and parachute deployment were photographed from its recovery ship. The eight-day, three-quarter million mile journey of Apollo 10 was completed on schedule at 12.52 Eastern Daylight Time as the command module splashed down within three miles of the helicopter carrier USS Princeton. As the sun rose over the Pacific, the men who had traveled to the moon were hoisted aboard the recovery helicopter and transported to the Princeton. The complete success of the critical test flight of Apollo 10 proved all systems of the Apollo space vehicle and the launch and mission control team ready for lunar landing operations. The men of Apollo 10 and their predecessors in the manned space program had performed their job well. The stage was set and waiting for the Apollo 11 crew to make the first epical manned landing on the lunar surface, the ultimate goal of the Apollo program. <laughs>